Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to go over the um, the sort of rules over the for the facade of this um, project, which is uh, called the pencil building, and it's in Singapore. So um, we'll just be dealing with this rectangle here in the uh, the front facade. So the first thing you want to do, um, well in this tutorial, we're only going to deal with horizontal members, and in the next tutorial, we'll deal with the uh, with the blend tools that creates the uh, the crisscrossing pattern. So um, the first thing um, I'll need to do is create my first um, horizontal member. So I'll go to create, um, go to shapes, and then I'll um, start with a line. I'm going to enable the render and also um, enable in viewport, and um, also. Uh, we'll make that shape uh, rectangular. Um, the last thing I'll need to do is specify that the initial type is corner and also that the drag type is also corner. So I'll drag, drag it a line holding shift, escape to finish, <coughs> and now I have my initial horizontal member. Um, I'd like the, um, I'd like to actually modify this so So the first thing I'll need to do is um, select, and we'll just come here to the to the width, and we'll adjust the width. Actually, we'll take this down a little bit, something like that. Yeah, maybe a little thinner. Okay, this will be a good place to start. So. Um, the first thing I want to do is <coughs> select that first member, and then we'll bring it into Para. Um, I'm going to specify this as an instance as opposed to a copy. A copy will allow me to um, adjust the individual members. I'm going to keep these all the same. What I'm going to adjust is the spacing in between them. So I'll keep that as an instance. Um, we will take off uh, keep original object and I'll be working with uh, 15, 15 members within the array. Um, and so we'll say no. Okay, so essentially what we've created so far is just our member, and uh, we're now in um, pair 3D. So all 15 members are sitting on top of each other, so everything is there. The first thing we need to do is uh, separate them out. So um, we'll expand the properties, um, and we'll, we'll be dealing with the, uh, the Z position. Um, so I'll highlight that, and I'll drag out <coughs> my first controller, which is going to be a linear controller. I'll double click on linear controller. Highlight that. First thing I want to do is uh, shift this down to, uh, this This is my first member, which is basically sitting on the ground plane. I want to um, uh, select the, the top member, and I can adjust the, uh, the height through here. So I'll just pick 25. And as you can see, it just shifted, it shifted this up 25. I can also just select it within the scene. Um, w is the hotkey and then shift it up manually if I'd like to as well. Okay, so um, the next thing I'll need to do is just update really quickly. And now you have 15 um, interpolated members within the array. So as you can see here, they're all evenly distributed between my first member on the ground plane and my second member, which is defined at this value here. So if I were to adjust this, and then refresh, it would automatically update within the scene, still maintaining the same amount of distance um, between the members. So um, what Pear is doing is essentially creating an index. And uh, what we need to do to create this type of scene is to um, modify that index. So the first thing we'll need to do beyond this point is to create a, uh, a variable override. So we want to come here to the, um, the controller. And we'll double click, and then we will select a variable override and just drag that in um, on top of our linear controller. So this is a really important point. So um, it's asking us what do we want to do with the existing controller. So either ignore the current controller or attempt to preserve the current controller as a subcontroller. We'd like to do use this option, which would um, make our variable override the parent and the linear controller the uh, the child. All right. So we can just get rid of this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do um, is highlight our variable controller, and you can see that it's a, a variable override 
from here. Um, we don't, we're not dealing with count one, we're only dealing with index one. Now that we've created our, um, our variable override, we'll need to create a graph controller, which is essentially going to modify um, the spacing here. So that'll give us all the control that we need to adjust the spacing. So I'll just double click uh, on the pair display. And then I'll drag in a graph controller. And this is going to function independently of this for now. We'll end up uh, connecting that uh, a little bit later. Uh, so the way that the graph controller works is it works from uh, values 0 to 1. Uh, in this instance, we'll want this to start at 0 and end at 1. So we can manually just drag this up, or we can just adjust it here um, if we're looking for more precision. Um, we won't be needing this, um, this, center, um, this center node, so we can just go up uh, and delete that point. <coughs> so this is going to be functioning as, um, as our range, and it'll control um, our spacing um, within the array. So the, the graph controller only gives us a range from 0 to 1, uh, and that'll control spacing, but we also um, are dealing with something within our scene ranging from 1 to 15. So what that means is we need to introduce um, a secondary controller. Um, so we'll double click on the pair display, and that's going to be a range controller. So we'll double click there. And we will highlight that. And we'll select that. So um, the input range is 0 to 1 and that's going to correspond with um, with our uh, graph controller because this is ranging from 0 to 1. What we are interested in manipulating is the range output. So uh, what we have in our scene is from 1 to 15 so after we've established our, our range controller, we're going to connect um, our graph controller to the initial value, right? which is represented here from 0 to 1, when this is representing 0 to 1. So um, what, we are, um, what, we ha what we've established um, in our range controller is from 1 to 15. However, things may change within the scene, and you don't want to be stuck to those numbers. So what we can do here to give us uh, a little bit more flexibility is drag out um, a new max number, and that will be controlled by a variable controller. So this here, um, we'll just need to specify what we're interested in controlling, and we, um, since we're dealing with count one, we can just highlight that. Um, and now, if we were to go back into our initial geometry, we could adjust this, um, this number, and it would update dynamically. So that gives us a little bit more range. Um, now what we need to do is um, take this part of um, the graph range and um, input it back into our pair flow. All right. So now we can update. And you see that we have um, a range that um, gets a bit more dense at the top and at the bottom, um, which is a resultant of this uh, like the, the graph controller not being as sort of steep as we need it to be. So um, what we want to do is um, select the, um, the point at 1, highlight the, um, the control, uh, the handle, and then drag that down, which is going to make um, this, um, uh, this here a little bit more uh, steep. So we can come back and update. And as you see, it, we've gotten significantly more dense um, at the bottom, and then we've got much more distance here at the top. Um, so from here, I mean, for this for this specific example, we've just used a graph controller, but uh, you can use a series of controllers, um, including a bitmap or a random controller, as long as the range is from 0 to 1. Um, and now, since we know um, how this is built, we can control all the settings within um, within the pair flow. And like I mentioned before, if we wanted to um, adjust the number of members um, within <coughs> the array, we could just deselect um, the Z position, and then we can adjust the number here. So if I wanted to increase that number to 25, I could then highlight that, um, update, and now that you see I've got uh, 25 members uh, within the array. So in the next video, we are going to go over the uh, vertical members that will cross over these horizontal members.